For the fourth chase, change was on the horizon. Twelve drivers would be allowed into the chase for the first time in its history, and seating would be based solely on wins. With these changes along with the new car tomorrow, many drivers would know if they were in or out by the time of Richmond. However, a handful would have to hold their breaths as their race for the fourth chase came down to the very last event. Similar to last year, only one driver has a possibility to jump from under the cut line that now sits at the 12th place spot in standings. The points leader coming in with an impressive four wins is Jeff Gordon. In the era of the chase, no driver has ever gone on quite a tear like Gordon has. Across the first 22 races, Gordon has compiled 20 top 10s. His two non-finishes are 12th and 41st. However, through the last three races coming into Richmond, it's been three consecutive finishes outside the top 10. Gordon still holds a points lead by 317, but it'll be under 50 when the chase starts. The man that has kept the closest to Gordon this season is Tony Stewart. Tony has had a respectable year through 25 races, grabbing three victories in the span of four races that has set him up nicely in chase season. The win tonight would tie him with the man that has already built a nearly two-race cushion on him. Third place is teammate Denny Hamlin. Another respectable season has placed Hamlin in his second chase in as many years. Whilst he only has one win at Loudon in July, his consistency could be what gets him over the hump in only his second season in the Cup Series. Fourth is Carl Edwards, returning to the chase for the first time since his Dark Horse run in 2005. Carl over the years accrued a couple of wins, including just a couple weeks ago at Bristol. And fifth is his teammate Matt Kenseth. Kenseth keeping his streak of being in all four chase races has been good, but not great compared to years prior. His team has struggled with the car tomorrow, only having one win at Fontana early in the year. They hope to gather 10 more points for the chase tonight. Sixth is the driver who is seeded number one regardless of finish tonight, Jimmy Johnson. Johnson has collected five wins so far through 2007, but has not shown near the consistency of his teammate Jeff Gordon. Johnson, however, is coming in on a hot streak, claiming victory just a week ago in his home track in Fontana. If he wins tonight, He'll have a 20-point cushion over Gordon, and a proverbial 450-point swing on his teammate in just one race. If he doesn't, though, the worst he will be is tied with the 24. Seventh is Jeff Burton, carrying his lone Texas win into the chase, along with a streak of decent runs. His only concern is how much his team banks on momentum, and how one poor run could snowball into a dozen. It's something you can't have in the chase, and they're looking to set up that momentum tonight. Eighth is Kyle Busch, the last driver guaranteed a spot in this year's chase tonight. He's the winner of the first car tomorrow race, and Kyle has voiced persistent displeasure with the new body. He's preparing himself to leave his Hendrick home after this year and go over to Joe Gibbs Racing. But for now, it is the pursuit of his first championship in only his third season. Ninth is Clint Boyer, the only chase driver currently without a win. Many have written Boyer off for his quiet yet consistent march into the title contention. Instead of taking the opportunity as luck, they are taking it with something to prove. And they can avoid disaster tonight, it'll be his first chase berth in his career. Another driver looking at his first chase berth tonight is Martin Shrux Jr. Finally claiming his first win of his career at Dover in May, he is the first of a few that benefit from the new cut line for the chase, sitting over 150 above it instead of being 20 if it were last year's format. The man 20 points behind him in 11th is Kurt Busch. The winner of the first chase, Kurt is back after being absent for a year in the chase last season. He's also carrying some momentum, winning two of the last five races, and putting himself in a respectable position to be the first person to win two chases. The last man in is Kevin Harvick, holding 128 points over the only man with a shot to top one. Harvick is this year's Daytona 500 winner, but has been relatively quiet since then. Even though he is the last man in, all he has to do is avoid total calamity to fall out of the fourth chase. And the only man with a way to race his way in is Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's going to need a Hail Mary effort late. Dale needs to win and then have a ton go his way tonight in order for him to even have a shot to make the chase. 
and it'll be his last year in the DEIA car. Moving over to Hendrick in the 88. He hopes that for his father's former team, they can have one last championship run, or at least one more win. Four cars have a chance to fall out or get into the chase tonight, while 39 don't have anything to lose at all. As Gordon and Johnson lead the field to green, the sellout crowd watches as they sprint to the opening laps. Gordon leads lap one as Johnson slips, and soon Newman and Stewart begin a battle. The battle brings Kyle Busch in, but before they can really mix it up, the first caution is out for the 66 of Jeff Green. Reigns is also involved, but everything is taken care of and the race restarts on lap 13. The junior fights into the 19th place position, battling a tight race car on exit. This is still leagues better for their 43rd place speed in final practice but he is still way behind Harvick, who is currently running 7th and battling Kyle Busch. Eventually another caution comes out for Paul Menard spun, and everybody comes down pit road. Newman and Montoya win the race off, with Hamlin dropping 5 spots, putting in a spring rubber. The race restarts on lap 29, with the broadcast missing it. Greg Biffle is headed to the garage meanwhile, and now at the front the third gate who had stayed out fades quickly through the field. Harvick battles another car that stayed out in Casey Mears, Eventually, he passes and catches the 48 car Jimmy Johnson, who is slowed by the traffic of the drivers in front. Kyle Edwards sits in the pack further back, turning laps much faster than their driver on track. Eventually, another caution comes out for Scott Riggs, who paces the wall. And now everybody comes in. Gordon, Johnson come out 1 2, and Newman, the former leader, heads back to third. As Junior restarts 10th on lap 70, Gordon holds off Johnson, and Junior passes by Harvick for ninth. And now a battle emerges for fourth. Benji Jr. starts to fade and quickly. Jeff Green, meanwhile, on new tires, races past the leaders and slows up Gordon, letting teammate Jimmy Johnson close the gap. Newman fades back as Hamlin attacks, and the leaders start working lap traffic. Much of the front runners level out. A caution is out for Joe Nemechek, who imitates the 10 car from earlier. Everybody pits again with the top two holding and Hamlin sliding to third. The broadcast misses yet another restart, and appears all have already spaced out in the one by the time we get back. During this state of stasis, Dale Jr. is slogging it in tenth, and the fight is cruel to him, as the seat reportedly is bothering him tremendously. The biggest problem on track right now is Carl Edwards, though, who reports the engine is blowing up. But the car suddenly gains an apparition of speed, it is humming through the leaders, passing Johnson, then sliding to the inside of Gordon. He prays that maybe a plug wire is off, and is dicing the competition and setting sail. But then, reality hits. The scenes, uncensored access, and where these drivers came from, to where they are today, from humble beginnings. Speaking about humble beginnings, whoa, and that's the, he said that he had a problem with the engine, and now smoke billowing out of the 99 car, our leader, Carl Edwards. That's all you can do, son. You did a hell of a job. Give it a fun, man. With the fallen leader in the garage, the rest are in the pits, and Johnson, the new leader, has issues, giving the lead to hometown kid Denny Hamlin. The race restarts, and Kyle Petty, a lap down, races the hell out of A.J. Allmendinger. And now Gordon charges the 11 and gets racing. Boyer arrives from the abyss and evolves himself in the battle now. He gets Gordon, driving with a purpose, and now he dives into the 11 for the lead. Chase for the championship. And all she wants to do is win. So this, hey, go for a win, man. Get aggressive. But he got a little aggressive. That's plenty hey, aggressive. Whoa, hang on, hang on. And he just lost it in the corner, but he was going for it, going, trying to get inside. Oh, Denny Hamlin's crew chief. There's a crew down there for Clint Boyer's bunch. They had just taken the cross flags for halfway, and Boyer was going for the lead. With the caution out, we traverse into the second half of the race. It restarts on lap 206 with Montoya and Robbie Gordon dueling each other. Eventually, Tony Stewart makes an appearance, passing the 11 for the second place spot. And Johnson, recovering from pit issues, sees him fourth, pursuing the 11 as well. 
Dale Jr.'s car has persistently gotten better, however, and is now fifth. He eventually passes the 48. A caution comes out again for Kenny Wallace getting dumped by David Strummy. Everybody comes in again. The top two stay the same with Jr. getting Johnson for third. ESPN misses yet another restart, and Jr. gets second now with Stewart grabbing third before another caution. Spin and heavy contact. McMurray's involved. Montoya's involved. Ryan Newman slowing down. David Reagan is there. And now fire on the front of one car. The two cars damaged and lots of fire on Juan Pablo Montoya's car. He needs to shut that car off and get out of it. Ryan Newman is smashed. Kurt Busch has minor damage, and while Pablo Montoya is on fire, Newman appears to have been dumped by Kenza. And Harvick, avoiding the accident, ducks through the infield grass and gets it all over his grill. As it overheats, they clean the car off, but do not put water back in. A weird move that could chance the engine, but nonetheless, he gets back out and he's on track still in the lead lap. As they come back to green under the current running order, Junior sits only 34 points behind Harvick. Gordon gets off good with 150 laps to go. Walls Palmerard runs like a traveling chicane in front of the leaders. Johnson cuts the chicane and goes up the middle, and he's able to pass Boyer in the maneuver, but Menard is still in the way. Before he can work by Paul, a caution comes out for the dismantled Reed Sorensen, and Harvick is able to dodge another crash. Everyone again pits, and the race goes back green with 137 to go. And Tony begins to stalk the 24, and Junior rides watching them both. He works him over, the old rivals dueling one another. Eventually, Tony works past Lowe, but Gordon tries to do a crossover on him before he finally submits the lead. Tony drags on exit and prevents it. During this, Hamlin is trying to fight back from the 20s. He is back there because of the last stop, where a crewman tried handing him a water bottle and actually bumped the kill switch in the process. The top three battle on, though, and the eight crew reports his brakes are getting overcooked. Hoping Harvick and the teens has more issues, Another caution comes out as a huge crash ensues on the backstretch. The massive wreck started when Kenny Wallace just stops in front of Elliot Sadler. And with Sadler reacting with trying to avoid him and stuffing it three wide, they call a red flag. And now Junior sits roughly 86 points back. The car's wrecking and Harvick avoiding is adding less hope to Junior making the chase, building more of a buffer of cars and less of a chance for Harvick to finish further back in the field. Gordon reports to Latart that the car is too tight now. And with the DNFs, Kevin Harvick is the only driver not locked in. Through the mayhem, Johnny Sauter sits fifth. And as pit stops ensue, Johnson wins the race off. Stewart and Gordon are now behind him, and we missed yet another restart with 101 laps left. Johnson runs away with his newfound clean track, and the top three pull away in general. They're all pacing one another. Kurt, with his dismantled rear end, is in tenth and Junior is charging back up to third place Jeff Gordon. Matt Kenseth, meanwhile, reports his brakes are going because of debris on the nose. His crew has no clue what he's talking about with debris on the front of the car. They don't see it. They ask him how Matt knows he has debris on the front of his car. He states he used during the last caution the reflection of the rear bumper of the 11 car as a way to tell that he has debris on the front of his car, right where the brake duct is. David Reagan, meanwhile, charges into the top eight, trying to put together his first top 10 run since Daytona in February. Under 70 to go, the seven car slams the wall and caution comes out yet again. Through possibly the final stops of the day, Johnson holds a lead with no adjustments. And Gordon needs an air pressure adjustment. Junior grabs third from Stewart on the stops and is now going to go for it all, even if it won't get him in the chase. We missed yet another restart and missed so much that there actually was another caution between the previous restart and now this caution. The 49 car caught on fire a lap into the restart. We assume that nothing has changed during that little run, and we'll restart again with 50 laps to go. Junior immediately attacks Gordon, who relents temporarily, before he chases back down the 8 car. The two race hard, letting Johnson get away, and Arvik slips up to 8. With 37 laps to go, Gordon slips back to 2nd, trying to mount a run to protect his one seed in the chase. Junior, though, doesn't let him go, and keeps driving him even harder, sliding and slipping all over the track. Stewart is there as well, and they battle lap after lap. They eventually try to race three wide, and the trio of Hall of Famers put together a classic behind Johnson. 
Junior works even higher, revving up the engine more and more, and uses the fourth lane to get around Gordon. Eventually, David Reagan works past the 24 as Gordon falls back. He calms down with reality setting in that Junior will not make it. And with six laps to go, finality sets in. Between the lap car of Dave Blaney right now, but now he clears him. Oh, Jeff, Junior just blowing an engine. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. gave it his all, and now smoke billowing from the back of the eight car. Another DEI engine failure. With just six laps to go, and how uh, how appropriate is that, given the fact that he's had five DNFs this year, and four of them have been engine-related issues. No caution comes out, and Johnson has to just complete the final laps and grab the championship lead. Again, until last weekend at California, Chad Knauss writes out of your screen. He led that driver and an entire team to the 2006 NASCAR Nextel Cup Championship. Jimmy Johnson trying to pick up win number six in 2007. It would be Jimmy Johnson's 29th career win, and he will come down and take the checkered flag as Jimmy Johnson sweeps both races and wins at Richmond. Yeah, boys, you can have the <laughs> With that, the championship field is set. The largest chase field in history. 12 drivers, all ready to take on the fourth chase. How will this make you guys a better organization, you and Tony Uri Jr. as you move to Hendrick? Well, Tony Uri is just really upset. You know, they work hard. Us drivers, we got it made. Those crewmen are the guys that put in all the time and all the effort, and they work real hard. And just to be running so good, to make the car better all night, and to get up in the top five, and to be sitting there racing Tony like that, that was really, really fun. He's probably mad because I bumped into him a couple times. But, you know, and just to blow up at the end, you know, it's real, real hard on them guys personally because they put so much into it. Um, you know, I get in there and drive the heck out of it, and I do it for myself and for my cousin, and uh, we'll keep doing that, you know. And uh, I've, had a, I've had a great group of guys this year. We're going to keep racing the rest of the season. Uh, we got more work to do. We got we got the season to finish. Um, and congratulations uh, to whoever won this race and all the guys that made the chase.